It's time for a brand new segment I'm calling State of the North Man, where I vomit a whole crap ton of information at you very quickly. The end goal of this series, which I vaguely hinted about in episode 1 and then proceeded to never mention again, is to kill every boss I can fight in my area. We're talking DKs, wildy bosses, god wars... Oh my god, it's Nex. Oh my god, it's Nex. Oh. Anyway, I'm gonna start killing those guys next season. Let's talk about this season. I've just returned to this account from a 22 month hiatus between episodes 8 and 9. Right now, my focus is getting all remaining one time exceptions out of the way as soon as possible. Of course, this will front load this season with exceptions, and three out of the next four episodes will have them. I didn't feel good about that, and with the ability to switch my respawn point to the Ferox Enclave for 5 million gold, I've made the decision to ban myself from death piling until I pay that 5 million. I'm hoping this change both makes the series more fun as well as saves. Wait a minute. Next episode is called Losing Everything? It's a working title? That doesn't change anything. That just means you saw the footage and the first thing you thought to name it was Losing Everything. I take it back. I take everything back. Let me death pile, please. Welcome back. In the last two videos, we got every requirement we need for Lunar Diplomacy. This episode, I went fletching. Nah, I'm kidding. Not getting distracted this time. Yet. Lunar Diplomacy, a quest about bringing peace to two warring nations who have been fighting for centuries. If that sounds familiar to you, don't worry. No trolls will be involved this time. On this island, they're called Sukas. First thing we need to do is grab a Seal of Passage, as it's an ancient Moon Clan tradition not to attack someone who has one, because they're probably a diplomat. I'd feel a bit safer if it was, oh I don't know, a law? Or a war crime? But a tradition is fine too. Thank you, Brunt the Chieftain. Fun fact about this thing, it weighs 10 pounds. It's time to go. Tally-ho. Pirate's Cove. This is just a short stop on our journey, but it has some interesting features, namely the Swamp Tar Barrel. Not only is this an item requirement for Horror from the Deep, it's also a significantly easier to get and more efficient secondary ingredient to train Herblore with, so I'll be coming here a lot for this. We also have some apples, could bake some pies, and over here we have rotten apples. Really went downhill fast, didn't it? Moving on. Captain Bentley and his verbally abusive parrot have agreed to take me to Lunar Isle. But first, I want to hear about your ship, the Lady Zay. It was a steal from Karamja. I no longer want to hear about your ship. Oh, they stole it from Gluff. Oh, that's a cute tie-in. Same parrot, same. Alright, time to go. This captain sucks. Way to sail a boat. Parrot's on my side now. Was that our full conversation? Uh, maybe it was the navigator's fault. Yeah, blame everything but yourself. Must have been the wind. <laughs> oh, it didn't work. Maybe it'll work eventually. To the navigator, I guess. I feel like I might be projecting here, but how dare you steer us in a big dumb circle? I'm telling the captain about you. You better do that then. Fine, I will. Well, do it. I am, watch. Here I go. Oh, I'm so scared now. Yeah, you better be. But you're still here. Yeah, but not for long. Well, you better go then. Fine, I'm gone. Spoken to the captain yet? Not yet, but I will. Well, do it. All right, it is definitely the navigator's fault. His course looked true. All right, I'll go talk to him again. Hey, way to steer us in a big dumb circle. I feel like we just had this conversation. Our ship must be jinxed. And he thinks it's me? Come on, the only two things I've done here are drive us around in a circle a bunch of times and have this weird deja vu conversation with you, and I kinda see your point. The last jinx person they had on board, they stuffed full of mackerel. Huh? Okay, we gotta figure this out quick. Captain put us in charge. It looks like there's a jinx. 
Among Us. I deserve this. All right, Eagle Eye, what do you know? What? What are you looking at? There is nothing over there. I'm clearing you because you're too incompetent to do this. Cabin Boy, let's hear it. I swear I didn't mean to. I didn't do anything at all. You can't prove it. I swear. No, not me. Nuh uh. No way. Yeah, sounds good to me. This guy's name is Betty B. Boppin. I'm clearing him solely on that. All right, Beefy, you're holding a knife and are literally covered in blood. But I'm looking for a jinx, not a murderer. You are clear. Lecherous Lee. The wiki says you like kittens. Clear. Which leads us to you, First Mate Davy Boy, if that's even your real name. Using my superior detective skills, I deduce that on the night of the jinx, you went off and did something for 20 minutes. Inspecting the rigging, huh? Likely story. Oh, you don't usually do that because it's the cabin boy's job. Prove it. Oh. He did. That's a lot of regulations. Alright, Captain Boy, I'm choosing to forgive you because I've been on this boat for 15 minutes and I'd really like to continue with the quest. Fortunately, I already have a lantern filled with oil, so I don't have to drop everything I'm doing and take a trip to Remington here. Here are Jinxes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We've finally made it, to the greatest cinematic in all of RuneScape. Fade in from black. Camera focuses on the one building in town I cannot use. We wait, in anticipation. And wait. This footage is at two times speed. Camera tries to give the viewer motion sickness. Cutscene over. Here goes nothing. Lunar Isle's pretty great even without finishing the quest. We now have access to a rune shop without risking everything running through the wilderness. The general store, although currently filled with junk from bots, buys items at very close to high elk value. And this shop sells Moonclan robes, which are actually decent mage gear. Okay, don't need the lantern anymore, so I'll drop that. Cool. We're here. Time to go do something else entirely. There are two things I need to do before I complete Lunar Diplomacy. I need one of each elemental talisman, and I need to get level 30 herb lore, which is a requirement for Edgar's Ruse. We'll start with the talismans. Talismans? Talismen? These are required for the quest. I have an air talisman. I kept that from Rune Mysteries. Dagonoths on Waterbirth Island have a 1 in 224 drop rate of each talisman I need, but I'm also killing them for their hide. I'd really like to make my second piece of rock shell, the plate body, which would let me stop carrying around this boulder in my inventory. I burned half the food I bought, and I actually don't have the level to cook salmon. Yeah, it's probably fine. It's just for Miss Prayerflix anyway. Kill number one for the first piece of hide. Kill number two for an air talisman. I guess I didn't need to hang on to this one. Fire talisman, there we go, one down. Hey, Fremmy Helm, that's fun. Not super useful, but isn't a bad elk. Nice, water talisman, one to go. Oh, this is going very well. Next kill, green Fremenic gloves. That's a fashion scape upgrade over the leather gloves I was wearing earlier. Hide number two. Where the, where the hell is that guy going? He had a dragon pickaxe. And here's the last Dagonoth hide piece. Here you go, Skulgerman. And we now have two pieces of rock shell. I feel... slimmer. The stats on this are actually a slight downgrade from the granite body, but it weighs less than half, which is nice. And most importantly, once I get the full rock shell set, I can store this and retrieve it from the costume room whenever I want. And I value that significantly more than the extra defense. Sad to see this go. I've had the granite body since episode 3, but if I ever want it again, it's as simple as buying it back from Barbarian Assault. We actually really lucked out at Dagonoth's. The only talisman we still need is Earth, which happens to be the only one Birthorp citizens drop, and I'm heading there anyway to train Herblore. I'm gonna be doing the Lunar Diplomacy Herblore method. During the quest, you get a special vial that you can put Guams and Marantils into. You can get an infinite number of these vials, and they give you 84 experience per herb, which is significantly more than you usually get for these herbs, plus you don't need to get secondaries. 
There are videos of people doing this method using thousands of herbs. I won't be doing that. I'm just going for level 30 for Edgar's Ruse, which is a quest I'd like to do next episode. 67 strength. Hey, there's the last talisman. And a good number of herbs. Aside from the Guam and the Marantil, I'm also picking up Terramin to make strength potions, and Renars, which I can clean at 25. Trip number one, noting the herbs. Trip two. Trip three. 24 herb lore from cleaning a Harlander. I do pick these up and clean them, but I can't get chocolate bars to make energy potions, and I can't make Harlander tar until level 44, so I just drop these afterwards. Trip number four. Trip five. Maze random. Colon arrows, you love to see it. And a full inventory for trip number six. I have about 300 more XP worth of herbs to go for level 30 herb lore. I'm starting to kill hobgoblins. I need limpwort roots to make strength potions as I can't make terramentar yet, that's at 39. I should get enough random herbs during this little grind to reach 30. And there's one right there. 66 hit points. I'm currently amassing a small army of rock crabs. First trip of roots. 68 strength and 950 total. And I believe that's the last Guam I need for 30 herb lore. Actually, I need one more root for the Terramin, and then I'm set. There we go. Vials of water from Sigmund. 25 herb lore. We can now clean Renar. And that's the only level we get from the strength potions. The real XP here is in the Guam and the Marantils. Got my seal of passage back from Brunt the Chieftain, and it's time to finish Lunar Diplomacy. The rest of the quest involves the Onaromancer, the leader of the Moon Clan who can read minds. But she's still gonna ask me why I'm here. Which... Um... Good question. We're gonna figure out why I'm here together, through the View of Self Dream Ritual. I need a bunch of stuff for this, so let's talk to Baba Yaga in the Walking Chicken House. Baba Yaga gave me a vial to make a Waking Sleep Potion. I then spent about 5 minutes trying to get more than one to train Herblore with, but the method happens later in the quest, so, uh, carrying on I guess. First thing I need is a pestle and mortar to grind a Suka tooth. Here's a quick shortcut off the island. Pestle and mortar from Sigmund, and another seal of passage. Brunt the Chieftain's gonna have to bulk order these, I think I'm on my fourth. Just two herbs in the vial for right now. Look at that XP. Looking forward to a lot more of that very soon. And there's the Suka Tooth. Picked up some hide as well. That'll be used for the armor. And this is the exception portion of the quest. I need to take the Draymond Staff to the four elemental runecrafting altars. I briefly considered unlocking the Abyss for this, because I guess it's more in my area. But it felt a little bit weird, and I didn't want to unlock anything I didn't have to. There we go. The Lunar Staff has been completed. And finally, we get to the armor. There are eight pieces in this set, which is the largest set of armor in the game. I don't want to hear how to make it, that would take forever. This large chunk of rune essence here is a reference to the Rune Mysteries quest. Sorry, old habits. This mine is actually great. There are gem rocks in here, so I'll be able to make stuff like burning amulets, which will be super useful in the wilderness. But right now we're just here for some lunar ore. Lunar bar. And there's the helmet. The cape is available for Miss Jane Blood Hagic Maid. That's her given Christian name. This person is wearing our amulet on her head, so let's find her lost tiara. Eh, close enough. Now we have four pieces of leather. We can just go ahead and craft these into four pieces of armor. Experience with the yak hide is really paying off. And the ring is right here. Alright, we're ready for the ritual. But first, I need every vial you got. 26 herblor. 27 herblor. This is the same inventory of vials. 28 Herblor, 29, should just be one more trip, and that is 30 Herblor. Edgar's Ruse is actually at 31, but we're gonna boost for that with Greenman's Ale. Quickly reorganizing the inventory, grabbing a bit of food, not sure how dangerous this really is. And there is one fight at the end, I'm just gonna grab some Blood Runes for Airwave. Uh, I'm going the wrong way. Oh, I need a tinderbox to light the thing. General Store, still has a lot of junk. Let's do it. This all seems very deep. Welcome to the Dream World, featuring fun minigames such as 
That that's not one of the mini games. The dice that aren't random. Basic pattern recognition. Woodcutting. The underground pass. The actual one that's random. Come on. Come on. We can do this. Just one more. We can make it, please. Uh, okay, that's fine. I think we can still win. Should be fine. Just don't miss it again. Come on. Fuck. The mime random event. And last, but certainly not least, shooting airwaves at yourself. So class, what have we learned? A uh, quest completed, by the way. I think the best piece of advice I got during this whole thing was, you've been playing for a while. Consider taking a break from your screen. But that is Lunar Diplomacy completed. We now have access to Lunar Magic, as well as the silliest level on the account, 20 Runecrafting, which is where it will stay forever, unless I really feel like lamping it to 35. Our robes are folded and neatly put away into the magic wardrobe. I'm not sure if I'll ever need these for anything, but it's nice to have a storable set of mage armor just in case. The staff, unfortunately, doesn't fit in here, so that just gets broken. I haven't talked much about the Lunar Spellbook, and that's been intentional. I've been trying to keep some of this as a surprise. Completing Lunar Diplomacy unlocks an entire skill for me, and that skill is Slayer. By using the NPC Contact Spell, I'm able to talk to a Slayer Master not in my area. And if I pick Crystallia for Wilderness Slayer, I have a 95.5% chance of receiving a task I can do. The only creature I can't access are Earth Warriors as they're only in the wildy portion of the Edgeville Dungeon. Now, all isn't lost if I get Earth Warriors, I can always skip the task with Turiel, who has a 79% chance of giving me a completable task. However, Crystallia will not give you a Slayer task until you complete one from any other Slayer Master. So I did the math. Taking into account tasks that I can do, tasks that I can't do, and tasks that I can reroll at Turiel, the Canifus Slayer Master has the highest probability of assigning me a task I can complete. Or at least, that's what I thought. There was one small error in my calculations. Hellhounds aren't dogs. This does change the numbers a fair bit, and I definitely should have chosen Vanica. Yes! Ghosts, I can do that. All right, we're safe. You'll also need this enchanted gem. What? Oh, and we completed an easy Mauritania task without doing Priest in Peril. Next episode, we've got some ghosts to kill. And apparently the episode title is Losing Everything. I wonder what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm.